Hey guys, it's uh, Captain here uh, with uh, Lino from uh, Chapman Lino. <laughs> and uh, cool, right, well, we've got a couple of guitars here to show you today from uh, those fine makers of guitars at Epiphone. And these. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> um, Shall I not keep up that premise? <laughs> I think I'll ditch that premise and just do something different instead. <laughs> What have we got here then? We have got... Well, they're clearly guitars. We've got some guitars. Epiphone. So basically, this is a special tribute to... Uh... Ah! Whoa. <laughs> Not another punishment, Master, please! Sorry, sorry, sorry. We've got some great Epiphone guitars here that are a tribute to a very special year in Gibson's history. Uh, so cast your minds back to the year of 1960. It was uh, the year in which uh, Les Gibson started uh, changed rather the neck profile on the Les Paul from the sort of fatter uh, profile that you would associate with a 50s Les Paul through to the slimmer profile that you would associate uh, on the neck of a modern Les Paul. And to celebrate that uh, fairly uh, important change in the way a Les Paul was made, Epiphone have done a very limited run of uh, upgraded Les Paul standards, Epiphone Les Paul standards. Uh, I'm holding in my hand here the version one, which is uh, the replica of the guitar, the Les Paul from the beginning of uh, 1960, which has the, the thicker uh, profile neck. And Lionel here is holding uh, the version three, uh, which has the slimmer profile. And in the background here, there's another one you can see in a, a very pretty Heritage Cherry Sunburst, which is uh, another, it's basically the same as that, but in another color. So these are the three models. Uh, Stick, our sound man, just asked me what happened to version 2. Uh, and there was a version 2, there was an in-between model that Gibson did a tribute of last year, but um, Epiphone uh, haven't made any of those. They've gone straight from the, the, the thick profile neck on the 50s one to the thin profile neck on this one. Lee, tell me about the top on this guitar. Well, obviously on a, a regular Gibson Les Paul standard, it would be a, a, one, a solid, sorry, not one piece, two piece book matched uh, cut maple top, flame maple top. That's a very expensive timber to buy. Um, tonally speaking and visually speaking, you can basically replicate the same effect uh, for less by using a genuine solid maple top, uh, but the flaming is on a veneer. So the flaming is a, is a, a much thinner piece of, of uh, maple veneer that's then laid over the top of the carved maple. Okay. So you get, the, you get the visual effect. You still get um, maple there on the yeah, top. Yeah, so you get the, the brightness and the clarity and the treble and um, tone. But it doesn't cost as much as you know, when Gibson go out and buy a great big yeah. chunky thick piece of um, flame maple. Hmm. Probably one of the, the coolest things here is the hardware on here, or certainly the pickups, are from uh, a Gibson USA Les Paul standard. So in fact, have... I was asking Lee earlier, what really is the difference between one of these and a Gibson Les Paul? And the answer is a lot. Well, uh, these are made in China. Yep. And some of the hardware is not as expensive or high end as the American made Gibson Les Pauls. Uh, for example, we think the tuners. The tuner's a little cheaper. Again, the inlay on one of these is your sort of um, uh, mother of pearl sort of look-alike, yeah. uh, as opposed to genuine abalone or mother of pearl. It's there's lots of things on a. Lots of people always ask me, how do you justify the fact that a Gibson Les Paul standard is kind of three times the price or four times the price of an Epiphone? And there isn't any real one thing that you can point at, uh, other than the fact that obviously labour costs in America are much more than they are in the Far East. But when you play one, you can feel the difference. The, it's basically it's, it's everything is a little bit better. Uh, but I think on. You know, a lot of people do buy Epiphone Les Pauls and mod them up. Yeah. So this is typically, I suppose, a, a popular mod. So to put, you know, the burst bucker humbuckers on there, um, and you know, you'll very, very quickly achieve a much more authentic sounding Les yeah. Paul sound. To be fair, this if you were a gigging guy and you use a Les Paul standard, this is a wicked backup for you because it's half the price. It's got the same pickups. Yeah. You know, great woods instead of great guitar. The tribute ones as well come with a, a really nice hard case that we'll do a, a flyover shot of now. That is pink. It's got a pink interior, but then so did the Gibson <laughs> ones. Um, you know, Gibson guitars used to come with brown cases with pink interiors. Um, and it's going to be tough to really kind of get this across on YouTube, but we'll get Rob to play both the, the larger profile one and the slimmer profile one and do his best to try and explain to you how they're different. Can we do that? No. <laughs> Let's go. So we're using our best awesome amp setup, amp setup that in the entire world ever. ever. 
uh, which is uh, running simultaneously through a, a Black Star 60, 60, and, 60 and the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, Deluxe by Fender. Um, and we've got a couple of pedals that we will use. No drive pedals. All the drive is just coming from the amps. We've got I a must chorus. Say I'm loving the Corona by TC. It's yeah. a great sounding chorus. So we've got a nice chorus and we've got a nice stereo Digitech delay, hardwire delay. Um, but you guys know what a Les Paul does. It's it's a you know it's a it's a real go-to guitar for it's us in these beef kind of demos. Machine. It's what it is. Everything sounds good with a Les Paul. The Burst Bucker One, you'll uh, again on the neck here uh, has less wines than the Burst Bucker Two on the bridge. So again, more your vintage uh, you know Bucker sound, whereas the the bridge one will drive the amp a little harder. Beef machine. Every time just makes me like smile. Les Paul, bit of drive. <laughs> this one now and uh, see if you can kind of explain how they feel different and who maybe one neck as opposed to the other might appeal to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So the main difference in feel between these two guitars is that when you go to bend a note, there's so much more substantial filling in the hand, you don't need to kind of compensate for it by moving quite so much when you bend, there's just guitar there giving you that little push. With the slightly thinner neck, when you come to do some juicy juicy bends, there's nothing in between your hand and the guitar, and for some reason it just feels less comfortable, I think. So for the bluesy bends, personally, fatter neck seems to help me. I don't but, know why. But thinner neck, you'd go well, for... Well, if you were a skinny wizard shred Ibanez keyboard mm. warrior. Because I, I was speaking to a guy the other day who was a real kind of Les Paul aficionado, and he was saying that the, the fatter the neck on the guitar, the more wood there is to actually resonate, and actually it should yeah. give you more sustain. I mean, I'm, it does. I, I'm not sure that... If um, you get used to a fat neck, you can do all sorts of stuff on it. It just takes a lot of time to kind of get used to... Um, the technique of, of just being, you know, being relaxed using a fan. You can still play fast on a fat neck, basically. Because there's, there's no doubt about it that the, the thinner neck ones are more popular. Yes. Because I, mean, um, I think most people will find the thinner neck ones, <coughs> you know, certainly easier to play or feel I think the thing is, if you've never play. tried a fat neck, your, your inclination would be mm. to think the thinner neck is better. It's not always so. For example, I had a friend of mine come over with a PRS with a wide fat neck, mm. and it, fe it just felt awesome. It right. felt like a super handful of goodness. Yeah. It didn't feel like I was missing out on having a thin neck. So, you know, it's just a sort of preference thing. You just got a little bit of uh, plastic. Cheers. There. It's just been, I think, was that? There's one on, one on the other. I got my Gibson one. wing, isn't it? There's one on this one. Shaf has been shredding these so hard the plastic's melting off the pickups here. Let me take these off and make them Again. shiny. So let me just recap then, because if you want one of these, you're going to have to be pretty quick. Because uh, So, 1960 Special <coughs> Tribute. Uh, in total, between the three models, so you've got a choice of the, the fat neck in Heritage Cherry Sunburst or the thin neck in uh, Cherry Sunburst, or you've got a thin neck in this Tobacco Burst. Uh, they only made uh, 1,960 of them, all three together. So that's not 1,960 each, that's in total of all three. Um, they're basically a, an Epiphone Les Paul with a solid carved maple top and American uh, pickups on them. Mm. Uh, they come with a hard case, which we'll, again, we showed you earlier well, on. Well, we'll float it over the screen right now again. Cool. And they sell for $5.99. So it's they're... worth saying also that 1,960 guitars are being made. Yeah. That might sound like a lot, it's really not. For the whole world. It's not is. a lot of guitars. Yeah. They'll go fast. Yeah. Well, how many, how many are you going to be getting in personally? We have 10 of each, uh, 10 of each color. Um, so go to the website, which if you don't know already is here, uh, and our website will show you how many we've got left. Thank you. 